Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. So today's distribution, I'm going to talk about Arco Linux. It's actually an Arch-based distribution. A lot of new users for Linux will shy away from Arch-based distributions. I am going to try my best to try to get you comfortable with this and basically state this flat out that anyone can install this thing and operate it. Because not only does this Arch-based distribution uh, use terminal to install software, but you can also have two package managers to install software. So uh, I'm going to give you a tour and an overview and tips along the way. Hopefully um, you will enjoy this video and more importantly, hopefully you will subscribe. I'm going to take you briefly over to my YouTube site just for a second and uh, encourage that you subscribe. I just opened up this YouTube channel recently, as you can see, Feb 9, 2000, uh, sorry, 2023. My previous YouTube site, I had over 450 videos on it. I have about um, somewhere in the two dozen range, and the library is growing. I do uh, post some things in the community section sometimes for help, and uh, I'll leave this up for a second. You can actually get out your smartphone and open up your camera and scan that and then you can save this link on your mobile device for later if you are at somebody's house for instance providing of course you can scan that uh, normally that's done with opening up uh, your smartphone camera and probably lights up yellow or something like that you can hit the link on it um, but more importantly I wanted to point out to you this magnifying glass when you become a subscriber because none of my videos are under two minutes I try to explain things very simply moving forward on this channel. Linux is for everyone, but I'm doing this for seniors uh, and any Linux enthusiast, and I'm going to try to explain a lot of things in very simple terms. My way of doing things is different from others. I had a YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, I had somebody make a comment the other day in my, on my videos that I like to do it this way. Yeah, you know what? Everybody has different ways of doing things. It works for you. It works for me to do the same job doing it a different way, for instance. I'm just showing you mine. Everybody has a different thing. Why am I pointing to this uh, little magnifying glass? Well, if you're using a standard web browser, a standard web browser, you can use this magnifying glass to do keyword searches on my videos. This is not available on mobile device applications for YouTube only for regular web browsers. This comes in handy for using simple words like this, M-O-U-S-E. It will look through all my videos and find any keyword, any tags, and all of my videos are tagged with keywords and start looking for mouse. So there's MX that has the word mouse in it. There's Linux Mint 21 that has the word mouse in it. Gen 2 has a, a, the word mouse in here. Right there it says mouse pointer. You get where I'm going with this. So as this video library grows to several hundred possibly, this becomes a very useful tool. I also have some links for you. This mouse pointer here came from this website. gnome-look.org is a non-profit website. So I'm going to click on DistroWatch to give you information on this distribution. Again, this is an Arch-based distribution. If you haven't been to DistroWatch, it's all about Linux in here. Articles and different Linux distribution. They're rated at number 19 on this particular website. I like this uh, piece of information box here because it, you can get a lot of wealth of information. Here's a screenshot. It's an Arch-based distribution, but it does have a package manager, meaning point-and-click ways of installing stuff. Now, you may have read that um, a lot of new users should stay away from Arch distributions. My philosophy is try anything yourself, and I'm going to try my best to get you comfortable with this distribution so you can test drive it, because it has the word live medium, which means you can go to the website and download it, burn it onto a USB stick or DVD. If you don't know how to do that, you can look that information up or get a friend. This is this distribution comes out of Belgium. Look at all the desktops that they offer you. The XFC is installed. You can install others. That's their website. 
arcolinux.info. Info. Now I'm going to move on. Where do I begin? Well, first of all, I'm going to make mention of this. I was really surprised of the amount of software that are a lot of mine are personal favorites. One of them is this one. It came natively installed. That's Variety Wallpaper Changer. I happen to like that wallpaper changer. It's the type of wallpaper changer that's uh, it can uh, pull wallpaper off the internet from different sites. It can also you can also put in your own personal folders in the mix. It's highly configurable. It's available for most distributions if you look for it. And you can install this either through terminal or a package manager. Doesn't matter. And that's the benefit of this uh, particular distribution. So let me give you a quick system information. So this is Arco Linux. Again, it's an Arch-based distribution. XFCE desktop. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't want to really learn a lot about terminal or I, I, I'm afraid of terminal. I don't know anything about terminal. Uh, can I get you comfortable by just giving you a couple of simple commands just to break the ice? So I'm going to give you a couple of little ones. Cal. And you're going to laugh when you see this. Oh, it's just a calendar. Okay. Kind of like this one. Except this one can do something special. So I'm going to have some fun here. And I've done this on many videos. Cal. Space. And uh, let's get a month. Do you want to use FEB for February? Or do you want to use the number 2? Because I can use either one. It doesn't matter. Let's use letters. FEB. Now, I'm going to make a year on the top of my head. 19... 65. Do you have a friend born in 1965, February, and your friend born February in 1965, 1965, I knew I could say that, was born on the 25th, they were born on a Thursday. You can have all kinds of fun with your friends and family doing this. I want to hit the upper arrow key to repeat this command. Then I'm going to change it up by changing that cal statement so you must have cal space something so i'm going to use the number three for march instead of the three letters and we're going to put in uh, something fairly recent so we'll say 1988 so do you have a friend or family member born uh, somewhere in march of 1988 there's the calendar from march of 88 and your friend was born on the 27th. Well, they were born on a Sunday. You can see you're having some fun with your friends and family. Just using simple commands. Now I'll do a little bit of trivia. I'll just type it out. C-A-L space. I can either use the number 7 or put in July. If you've seen any of my previous video, you know where I'm going with this. 1776. Independence Day in the United States fell on July 4th in 1776. What day of the week was that? I'll pause for uh, for effect. Anyways, you can you you can look that up on the internet, but this uh, terminal box can do this in one second. That was a Thursday, so you can have all kinds of fun with this. So I'm gonna type clear. And then I want to type history. I don't mean the history of the world. I mean the history of the commands that I punched into this terminal box. This is a very typical installation command. And I'm going to break it down for you completely so you can understand it. Here are those things I was having fun with just a couple of minutes ago. This command here, I'll break it down for you. But let me first show you what that installed. It installed this card game. I have a problem pronouncing that word. Eisel rot. It's just a card game. Let me break the command down for you. Sudo stands for super user do. It gives me elevated privileges to do something. In this case, sudo space Pac-Man. And now you can uh, think about a couple of things. Do you recall that game? Pac-Man, it's a little yellow guy that was eating little 
uh, dots and uh, other <laughs> moving little guys. All right, you may have remembered that from like the 80s or whatever, but anyways, if not, you can also do that. Uh, look that up on the internet. But if you can think about that as a mnemonic, uh, Pac-Man is the command, space dash S-Y is the command for installing something. That's one of the commands in here for installing software. The name of that software is that. That is the card game that I pointed to. Uh, where is it? That is the exact same name. If you look at the line a couple of bo uh, above here where it says the same thing, sudo pacman dash sy, Inkscape, that's the name of the application or program. Inkscape is this one right here. Uh, where is it under graphics? Yeah, it's this one right here. It's a vector-based program. Do you have to use terminal in this distribution? No, this has a package manager also. Do you want me to go out of, uh, instead of walking through the menu, I'll, I'll just go out of turn for a second and show you this. That's why I say, I, I think I can teach anyone how to run this. Okay, so this is the package manager. In other words, it's the graphical way of installing software. Believe it or not, there's two of these in here. Different kind, one is a GNOME installer. I'll get to that maybe later if you want to continue watching. And hopefully you will subscribe because you can watch this video in multiple sessions at your leisure, not mine. So you have categories to go searching for things. I don't know what you're into. But more importantly, when you see a trash can, that means it's installed. When you don't see a trash can and it's got a blue arrow, that means it's not installed. You can click it and hit install. Some things have screenshots. Some things don't. Let me take a look at the install programs. Oh, here, here's that program that I installed through Terminal, shown up here in a graphical environment. And I can hit the trash can or I can click the screen, take a look at the screenshot, make this even bigger if I want. As you know, you can resize these windows. Okay, is that a little better? You get more information now? You can hit the launch key. Norm normally, you probably launch it from the menu, but you can certainly do it from here. It does work. But you, more importantly, you can remove it. I don't have to open up terminal to uninstall this is what I'm getting at. You'll see that uh, watching my videos that I have some different ways of doing things and how I communicate that information. I am trying to do this in a little uh, simpler method than a lot of people explain Linux information. More importantly, this is all graphical. You browse, you can search. Search for the name. Now this particular application down here is called Variety. So what I'm going to do is highlight that word because I'm going to cheat and copy that and use that in my search criteria and then hit enter. Okay, Variety is a wallpaper changer. This one doesn't have a screenshot. That's okay though. The Variety wallpaper changer screen setup screen looks like this. You can do all kinds of things with it. You can activate different folders and files, including your own. That's my wallpaper folder. That's coming from NASA's picture of the day. I have it turned off currently. But as soon as I activate that, it starts cycling wallpapers. I, even, I can even do seconds in here. Five seconds is the minimum. Five days is the maximum. It's very versatile. Software Manager, point and click. Terminal, you can install that. You can also have fun with Terminal. Keep in mind, these commands are fun to use sometimes on your friends and family to uh, tell them what day of the week they were born on. Eh, just some humor there, folks. All right, so I'm gonna actually, if you continue watching, I will show you how to add extra little icons for your shutdown and restart icons. I'll also show you how to uh, create uh, uh, quick web-based icons and stuff like that. So let's take a tour of this system. Again, by the time that I get done, if you watch this in its entirety, any new user can, as long as they know how to actually uh, burn the image from the website onto a USB stick or DVD, you can install it on your computer and, and get it done rather easily and operate this thing rather easily, even as a new user with this ArchBase distribution. 
And you may read on the internet that, oh, arch-based distributions are hard to use. Actually, this one is not. So here's a welcome screen for you. The mirrors just mean where the software has come from. Gparted is something to use to partition hard drives. You don't have to use this stuff. You can do an off, uh, easy offline installation too. And there's all kinds of little clicks in here. Everything on here practically is a click. I'm running this completely off a USB stick, if you're curious. Now, let's walk through the menus. So you got the welcome screen, you got a tweak tool, I'm gonna to skip over that. You got Firefox, your regular web browser, and Thunar is your file manager for this distribution. Now, I'm just gonna manually do this. There's many ways to resize things. Um, you know, I had a, um, a user leave me a message the other day that was, says, I do it this way, or I, my suggestion is, I do it that way. You know what, everybody has a different ways of doing things, and I appreciate that. But uh, I'm just presenting the methods that I use. There are many ways to do a lot of things. Let's put it that way. All right, for one thing, uh, resizing these icons, I, I'm going to show you my way. All right, so you could click the view normal in and out and keyboard equivalent, but I am right-handed, so I'm holding my computer mouse with my right hand, and most modern computer mice have scroll wheels on them. And if you're curious about that mouse cursor, I'm gonna show you where mine is, because this normally does not come installed. But more importantly, I have my other left hand not doing anything other than it's resting near my keyboard and I have a control key that sits on the very left corner of my keyboard that I'm going to use to resize icons along with my mouse scroll wheel. So I'm going to take my left hand and depress the control key and hold it there while rolling up and down on my computer mouse scroll wheel to resize these on the fly. I think you'll find this method rather easy to use. Now I'm going to click the pictures folder, double click, and open up the wallpaper for a second. I have a lot of weird wallpapers. I'll show those in a minute, or a couple of them. But more importantly, take a look at the size of the thumbnails. So what I'm going to do is depress the control key down again and hold it, and using my control, I'm sorry, scroll wheel on my computer mouse to make these larger, or smaller, or dinky. So as I scroll up and down, I will find a comfortable size for my thumbnails. Once I get it to whatever size I want it, I release the control key, and now I can scroll in the new resized thumbnails. I think you'll find this a benefit. If you don't want to scroll, then you can grab a hold of this guy. It's a little harder to do in my book instead of rolling up and down with your, your mouse. All right, let's uh, pick on one image or two. How about this one? We'll just double click on it. So um, I got a lot of weird wallpaper, as I pointed out. There's some extra tools up here for you to investigate if you decide to install this distribution. This distribution comes with a lot of different options for you. Now, what if I wanted this as wallpaper or any of these things? I have photos mixed in here too. So you can bring in digital photos of your children, your friends, your pets, uh, wallpaper off the internet, doesn't matter. Put them in a folder, right click on them, set them as wallpaper, it's that simple. Right click, set as wallpaper. I can do this all day long. That one's weird. These guys are skateboarding. Hopefully you're watching this on a large screen. These guys are skateboarding on top of buildings. Yeah, I got some strange wallpaper. But more importantly, resizing icons on the fly can be done by depressing the control key and scrolling up and down on your computer mouse. Maybe I'm freaking you out doing this. But you can even get it to the uh, humongous size like that. Now I'm, I release the control key and it's staying in this humongous size. That's probably too big, so I'm gonna scroll the other way. To me, that's more comfortable. Again, depending on the window size. And again, there's many ways to resize these windows. Okay, so I'm gonna double click on that. In most cases, that works to go full screen. Double click to go back to the previous setting. 
All right, let me go back to the live user. So you can create folders in here. You can do all these other little things in here. You can also view your hidden files and folders. There are some hidden files and folders. View, show hidden files and folders. Control H, Control H. Control H works in a lot of different Linux distributions for doing this. Control H now shows me my hidden files and folders. So anything that starts with a dot that looks like a folder is a hidden folder. This one here I created myself. So this is uh, hidden files. Born again shell history is what bash history stands for. I'm going to double click that. These are the commands that I just performed. I just showed you the funny calendar commands right here. So I right clicked and created a hidden folder. When I hit create, I started with a period or a dot. And then I created this folder called dot icons. This mouse pointer is stored there. When I put mouse pointer themes in there, and you can watch my other videos how to do this. Um, basically, you pick the mouse pointer by clicking your mouse and touchpad properties. There is a Zenus, there is nighttime something red, and radioactive is this one. So these three I installed. The rest of these are default mouse pointers stored in a different area on your hard drive. They're called system white mouse pointers. They're available for all users. This is the default mouse pointer that you get with the live copy of Arco Linux or when you install the XFCE desktop. You do not get these. You can watch my other video how to install mouse pointers for any XFCE distribution. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to my mouse pointer, but more importantly, that's where they're stored. I can delete these at will. I can delete one. Here's a multi-select for you. I can delete two and leave that one, or I can delete the whole folder. And if I delete the whole folder, let me see what's in my trash. I'm gonna empty this. It's just garbage in there. And go back one and back one. And I'm going to delete this whole folder. But before I do that, I always recommend that people change to a different mouse pointer, just as a good habit, to something different than what you're deleting. So I'm going to pick this default one and then hit close. And uh, not to get off on a tangent, but anytime you change mouse pointer, you should log in and out of the system, if not reboot. Now I'm going to delete this manually by hitting the delete key. And I'm going to let you see it's in my trash. Now I'm gonna walk over to here and let you see that basically this now, this theme is gone. These are now default. There is no more of those mouse pointers that I pointed out that are inside of this folder. There's no more Azenus in here. No nighttime, di uh, night diamond red or radioactive. They're all gone. Can I return them? I absolutely. I normally recommend that you back out of the screen first if you're going to do this, now I'm going to right click and restore that folder. Now it's back to where it was. And when I get back in here, the mouse pointers will return. There they are. Radioactive, Azenus, and Night Diamond Red. All right, I've spent way too much time on this thing, so I'm going to continue. So that's in my file manager, Thunar. Turning off the hidden files, Control H. Turn that map back on and off. Resizing icons on the fly. Holding down the control key with my left hand because I'm right-handed and scrolling with my computer mouse while holding it down resizes these on the fly. You also have devices. I only have one hard drive in here, which is this one. It is uh, MX uh, or Linux MX or MX Linux, however you want to look at it that way. It's version 21 and that's their home folders. So these are my home folders and trash can, of course. So this is Thunar, the file manager. Operates just about like any other XFCE desktop, whether it's Arch-based or other-based, like uh, maybe Debian or whatever other distributions you'll want to think about. Again, terminal, and you can put anything in your favorites by right-clicking on it. 
So if I take this game, for instance, I can right click and add it to favorites. And now that game is in my favorites. I could also add that to my desktop by just right clicking and add it to the panel and desktop. It's now sitting in the corner, right click, move, and I'll stick it next to the simple screen recorder. I'll do the same thing with the web browser, right click and add it to panel, right click, move, and drag it over here where there's a red line. You can even drop it here if there's a red line. Anywhere a red line appears, you can drop these. Okay, hopefully that is helpful information to you. So uh, continuing my plight here on my story, I will go to accessories. I will uh, pause once in a while, but there is way too much software to talk about. So I'm just gonna keep scrolling and let you see what's in there. So calculator is calculator. It's a weird name for it. Another command to install this distribution. Kind of nice to have multiple ways of doing things, right? There's a screenshot tool in case you need to make changes on anything. Thunar, the file manager, USB image writer and stick formatter are extremely easy to use tool. You can actually make a bootable USB stick with another Linux distribution. There's only three keys in there. The same thing with the stick formatter. It's got four different file formats to format your stick. FAT32 is the most compatible. Variety is that wallpaper changer that sits in the down here where it came and installed automatically on this live uh, distribution, which I found stunning. Vim is an old style text editor. It can be a learning curve to learn that one. You can download other text editors, of course, from either terminal or your software managers. Under development, that's the programs that are on that uh, USB live stick, in my case. There were no games installed. I installed that through Terminal, just to point that out to you. Under graphics, um, I installed Inkscape through Terminal. Other than that, not all the other stuff was installed. And you can, of course, install GIMP, which is like Photoshop, uh, also from uh, either Terminal or you can use one of the software package manager point and click. I use uh, GIMP pretty heavily. I have used it on my previous YouTube channel to create those uh, 450 thumbnails on those videos and I'm gonna be using that also on my new YouTube channel. So the internet, if you don't like Firefox, you can install other web browsers, but this is what comes installed automatically on this one. And also this stuff. Simple Screen Recorder is what I use to record most of my videos on my YouTube uh, channel. I found it stunning that it came automatically installed. What was even more stunning was this one. I use this one uh, on also my distributions when I try to bring up those uh, little video cameras that I have. I have a couple of them. They're not the best in the world, but I make do with what I have. But more importantly, when you uh, actually see my face, they're done with this tool here. These cameras are connected to a USB port and this tool does a fairly decent job. So it's a video viewer and capturer. All right, so weird name though. Um, so I left that there, Office. Uh, you don't have a full Office suite, but you can certainly either install it through Terminal or the software package managers like LibreOffice. LibreOffice is uh, the best price for LibreOffice. It's free, it's like Microsoft Office and it does save files in Microsoft native file formats. Uh, best price with LibreOffice, of course, it is open source or free. Also available on Microsoft Windows and Macs. All you gotta do is go to their website. All right, so under settings, I'm going to cover that a little bit later. Under, under system, again, this package manager can be opened up and this is uh, Pamac. PyMac, PyMac, the graphical way of installing software. That's just one way. There is another one. And um, under settings, I covered that. Moving down, disk analyzer, uh, another install command. Keep moving down. Uh, another way to install software. Stunning, isn't it? There's two so graphical software managers here. This is the GNOME project. Yeah, I found that amazing, actually. 
that there are two of these things in here. Okay, or maybe not. Some people may not find that amazing, but some people do. All right, so I have another shortcut to terminal and the file manager, and uh, then I'm gonna move on to settings in a second. So settings icon, lock screen, switch user, multifunction, logout, restart, shut down, you get the idea, multifunction key. I'm gonna show you a little trick to add some additional keys, right click, properties, commands. I'm gonna add a shutdown and restart key. Don't mess with these unless you know what you're doing as far as the text in these little boxes. Now I have a dedicated shutdown key and restart. So depending on the theme you picked in settings, these could be different color. If you need an additional logout key that you want to place in the corner of your panel bar, right click on the screen, create a launcher, type in LOG. You want to think about linking logs or logout. It's the middle one. Depending on the theme you picked, this icon could be a different color, but don't mess with any of the settings. Just hit create twice and you're done. This is now your logout icon or restart. And you can right click, open with create launcher. Again, right click, open with, open with create launcher on panel, puts the icon in the corner and you can leave it there. And you can also get rid of that one. And this one will still function. Okay, that's if you want one of those down there. Settings. Okay, and some, uh, if you've ever used an XFCE distribution, you'll notice that these icons are different from theirs. So um, with Arco Linux, they have their own icon sets. And uh, if you have seen any of my previous videos over the years, I also do custom icon stuff. Um, I even change like some of the logos sometimes. But more importantly, this is their icon set. So about me is where you can place in your mugshot if you have this installed through here. You can either select from the stock or you can uh, hit browse and bring in your own photo, for instance. That's what I meant by mugshot. Your appearance is where you can change your style and icon sets. I highly suggest when you play with any boxes that alters anything on your system is to make a screenshot of at least the window. Full screen takes a picture of not only this box, the background and your panel bar, but not this box. The selection part, if you take the screenshot, will light up the screen with kind of like um, a different color almost. And you can just highlight a box and take a screenshot of that. That comes in handy inside of web browsers also for making, if you're trying to copy information in a hurry. So the screenshot told us can be useful in a lot of places. Don't forget, if you alter these, do you have a good memory? Because a lot of times people go, I, I need to go back to my previous theme because I made a mess of things. Screenshots are going to be your friend. Same thing goes with this. You can see a lot of selections. So uh, for you folks that are visually impaired that like large text, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. This uh, custom dots per inch or DPI, you can uh, click that. So I'm going to actually highlight this. Uh, instead of making a screenshot, I'm going to copy that number and just crank that up. Everything just got larger. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my previous number and hit paste and hit enter. That's what the previous number was. You can also do the default font. I'll copy that number and do the same deal. And then I'm going to crank this up to like a 20. Everything is huge. And then I'll put that number back and hit select. So now that's back to 11. All right, so some tips for you here. Yes, I got different. I do a lot of different things. Hence, you should subscribe because you'll, you'll find some tricks that you probably won't find elsewhere. But everybody's got a different way of doing things. Let's put it that way. There are way too many things for me to discuss in here, to be honest with you. However, I will touch upon a couple of things. Let's talk about the panel for a second. Again, I would recommend a screenshot if I was doing this. If you want to reduce this panel bar size, grab a hold of this guy. You can see it disappearing right here. However, just keep in mind when you start reducing these things, um, you will more likely want this feature on because the more icons you add, 
This will grow with you. I don't really see any use for this, but maybe you do. Now on this thing here, I'm just gonna copy this number instead of doing a screenshot. Uh, this number will go up to 128. So I will make this large. And 16, I believe, is the bottom end. I'll make this tiny, just to do this in a hurry. You could scroll up and down, that's up to you. So now you can see the panel bar icons are almost tiny and dinky. So what I'm gonna do here is cheat and hit paste and hit enter. This is where I was at previously. What is automatically hide the panel? Well, exactly what it says. And it's normally set to never. If you set it to intelligently, all that means is I'm going to um, basically close this window because I need to get this uh, little red bar off of here. I'll open this uh, icon that I placed on here earlier and I'm going to take this window and drag it where it hits the panel bar and you'll see it disappear. I have to take my mouse pointer and point downstairs for it to return. As soon as I drag this up in the air, the panel bar will reappear. I'm going to double click on this thing and you'll notice that the panel bar will disappear. So I'll click this website here for a second. Hopefully you have subscribed. Double click. The panel bar disappears. You go downstairs and it reappears. That's intelligently hiding your panel bar. That's all that means. So again, as long as you've got a gap in here, that should, should come back up. So there's another way. I don't have to go through settings to do this. I'm going to right click on the panel bar, hit panel preferences, and I'm going to change this to never. You can also resize that thing I was making mention earlier and the row sizes. Again, uh, copy that one more time and punch in the word one or number 128. So that's maximum and 16 is minimum. And now I am going to return that number. I also recommend screenshots if you're gonna be doing this kind of stuff. Close. So, where did I leave off? Settings. So that was your panel. Screensaver. Blanks out your screen after whatever minutes. Um, window manager. You don't like this X, you want it over here for whatever reason. Drag that over to here and your X is now here and you can drag the remainder buttons over there if you want to. I'm going to move it back. I am not going to talk about every setting in here today. You can change your display settings. My screen is 43 inches, not 72. All my Linux distribution report that as 72. When you are changing resolutions, if you have this option, and the refresh rate, always, always check your refresh rates, and you change your resolution and refresh, and you hit apply, and the screen goes black and stays black for more than five or six seconds, leave it alone. Do not unplug the computer. Do not do not pass go in other words just hold on in about 20 or 30 seconds your your display should return to the previous setting and whatever you do if you have an installed copy a lot of people do this they will make a mess of things if you try to actually turn the power off my advice to you is if you're changing resolutions and refresh rates very important after you hit apply and it doesn't change that means the mode is incompatible, so allow it to time out. It's normally 20 or 30 seconds, and it'll revert back to the previous setting so you don't have to reinstall your system in case you decided to turn the computer off during an installed copy. You can do that with a live copy, but not an installed version on any Linux distribution. It's not good advice. A lot of different ways of doing things, folks. All right, so mouse and touchpad, already covered that. That's where this guy is stored. Power manager, a lot of time you want to actually change this from uh, sometimes in some distribution it says do nothing. Sometimes it says uh, shut down. Whatever yours is, I usually put mine to ask because it does this. This is for folks that have that keyboard 
equivalent on their, they have a power button on their keyboard. When you depress it, when you have ask, now you can see my mouse pointer can do tricks. It's twirling right now. Anyways, it gives you these commands when you do the ask. And that's what you want. You want to be have a, you want to have an option. However, you can set it to shut down if you want to. I prefer this method myself. One key over here, it gives me a confirmation before I click and press a button, for instance. So this is my favorite command. Again, people have different ways of doing things. Another shortcut to add and remove software. Uh, another tool to look at your disks and USB sticks as far as what kind of partitions are on them and maybe do some of that work there. Gparted is also another tool for partitioning hard drives. Grub Customizer stands for Grand Unified Bootloader. Use it sparingly. It's for dual boot systems. I normally, if I use Grub Customizer, I normally edit the file manually and that comes from experience. Use Grub Customizer sparingly if you're going to use it or dual boot systems. Quick system information. Exactly what it says. It runs terminal command. Just like I did out of terminal. It uses an INXI command. Just like I did out of terminal. Or did I not show that? I think I did. I'll do it again here. INXI and my favorite command is that one. So um, I know this is semi-transparent, so let me move the boxes out of the way to get a little dark in here. Uh, but if I was looking for, um, so the INXI command is right here. So if I was looking for motherboard information, it's actually under machine, M-O-B-O -O stands for motherboard. That's the manufacturer and model number. So if I was in the market for RAM and um, I needed to know what kind of RAM my motherboard used, I can use information like that, okay? However, since uh, this distribution has many ways of showing you stuff, there's also system profiler and benchmark installed. A lot of distribution you can install this manually. This comes it with it installed automatically. Hard info is who makes this thing. And where is it in the menu? It looks like uh, I'm going to put in SY for the search field. And you can see that very useful command. System Profiler and Benchmark is what that is called and that is sitting right here and I can click on it from the settings area or I can look for it in the menu but it's made by HardInfo and you can find this in most Linux distributions. It's a graphical tool for looking at your computer information. What's in the box? There's my model number and my motherboard right here. And I had a user ask me about, oh, why do you have all this RAM? I think I made mention of it. If I didn't, I use these computers for other things. So let's not read into it too much. You don't need this kind of RAM to run uh, these kind of distributions for the most part. If you are curious what the bare minimum specifications on any Linux distribution, open up your standard web browser and go do a search for what the minimum requirements are. Okay. So um, USB image writer, USB stick formatter, simple tools. Okay, so that was system profiler. Right clicking on your screen, you can do all of these things. I'm gonna quickly just show you one more thing because we're getting into the 43rd minute. I'm gonna create a web link. So I'm going to get, um, I'll use my own YouTube site because I just need something in a hurry. So I'll grab a hold of the address here, Linux for Seniors, the actual URL, universal resource, in other words, the web address. And I just need to make sure that I copied this properly, and I did. So what I'm going to do is close this and uh, just type in the name for it. You can type anything you want. Uh, you can put in text, whatever you want. And uh, then you can assign it a different icon if you like. These are just icons coming from the system. You can pick anything you want. I'm just going to scroll and pick this funny looking. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a cat or a dog, but I'm just going to use that for an icon. Now I'm going to hit create. Double click. This is a web based icon. It goes directly to my YouTube site because that's what I used for an address. If I want that icon on my desktop, right click, 
open with create launcher on panel sticks it in the corner right click and move and I'll stick it next to the web browser that's how you can simply create any web based icons using that simple tool I'll quickly walk through this menu because again I'm getting into the 45th minute now all these different I'm going to start at the top all these are just different application shortcuts to whatever's in this tree you don't have to use half of these programs if you don't want to I'm just showing you what's on here installed lots of different things you can also log out of here or shut down and restart okay on that note folks I don't know if I walk through this menu here but calendar volume um, this is Variety, the automatic wallpaper changer. That's my simple screen recorder. That's my um, Wi-Fi. Uh, that little splash just tells me I got updates. And uh, I think that's a, yeah, it's a, like a clip tool and Bluetooth and four different desktops. Other than that, I think I'm done. So I will say thank you for watching and hopefully you subscribed and uh, you folks have a wonderful day.